expect. I can't wait to get into this. We're having the fist bumps. Hopefully, that is a sign of good things to come. Two legends standing behind them as well, right? Zonic, multiple. He won the most number of majors as a coach in CSGO. And then we have Gop B as a player, as a coach. He has been a bastion for German Counter-Strike. And like Counter-Strike as a whole globally. Everyone knows him. Everyone loves him. He's back where he belongs. Smiles are all around. And here we go, Vince. are going to be jumping in on Mirage. It is the map pick from Vitality. The French-Danish side picking the map, and they will be starting on the T side. For the CTs, we got a kit and a couple of flashes for Krimbo, the youngster taking one for the team, rest of them USPs and Kevlar. And you can look at Vitality, a Molotov, two smokes, a flashbang, and looking at the setup, it looks like it is gonna be an A pincer here. That appears to be the play. Slowing things down somewhat, and Big now stacking four players over on the B site. This could get a little bit sketchy, but Vitality, have kept their options open. Searson, though, is finding information. He's flanking around the back of T-Spawn. He already knows this can't be A. That's allowing them to stack all these players over on the B side of the map. And Artisian goes down to the hands of Dupree. But they still have no idea that Searson is making moves. The problem here, though, on the side of Big, is if they continue to lose players, this flank will mean nothing. Quick pivot coming in for Vitality, and they could actually get caught off guard. Searson, <gasps> that's the bomb. He had a chance. There was a tiny window where it could have prevented the bomb from making it into the bomb site, but he will manage to elude him. 3v5, and look at the flank as well, Vince. This is looking rough. Apex will be found. They won't be expecting the second player. They haven't seen him yet as Dupree plucks Searson. As Searson did get a pick from Catwalk because he was playing very passively and patiently, but it was too little too late. The bomb's now been planted down. Dupree already with two still in the fight. Whereas Krimbo and Faven have to move on to the side, out into the open, but Krimbo has connected, and now Faven has chances, and he will finish the frag off. The bomb planted out in the open. There is a kit in the hands of Krimbo, and a flashbang to proceed that peek into ramp, where Faven will gobble down the kill, but it's down to Dupree, takes the frag in the back, and all he has to do now is wait. Dupree may very well pick up a 4K as well. This round is done. Super close though, and so many moving parts in the process. Dupree may get his head removed, but they have first blood anyway. Great attempt from Big there in the retake, especially Krimbo. Finding all the players' vitality. Even had that one flashbang to take down a player at ramp, but Dupree, huge three kill for him. And he's a player that we did touch upon. You know, we've seen Magis turn up, we've seen Zai Wu turn up. And we questioned if Dupree is going to have a game here. And it looks like he's going to be getting off to a very solid start. Vitality, though, they're going to be happy with the way it still panned out, losing all five members, but they still win the round. And look at this from Big. Aggression towards mid. The M4 in the hands of Faven. It's the only one rifle purchase alongside a scout in the hands of Sirison. And we know what Sirison can do with the scout, Vince. Probably the best scouter on the planet. And Krimbo, slowly trailing back. That nade could deal quite a bit of damage, waiting for the utility to be deployed. And here comes the nade, and the hit. Oh, a lot of damage, though, put into play with a bit of grenades onto Masuda. He'll fall into the headshot range of a few of these weapons as Fable trade back one for one. But Masuda opens up the site, Sears misses his chance, and he will be punished as a result. Taps him with a P250. There's no slouch with the scout either, as he flicks the head of Dupree clean off, and that spawn puts the bomb on the ground. It's in such a bad position now. Even with a smoke down and Zaiwu capable of taking down Tabs in the process, Tizian has made inroads. He may get caught though, and just slightly peeking through the smoke. So Vitality will just about sketch their way through. That got a little scared of Vitality. What a shot coming in from Taps and with the scout, the flick downwards. With an M4, it needed to find more than just the one kill. Unfortunately, if I haven't just able to find the one. So Vitality, they're able to withstand the force buy from the German side. Of course, gonna have a pretty comfortable buy there. An M4 from the previous round, a couple of upgrades in the AK-47s. Apex gonna be wielding the Mac 10 He's a guy gonna be going on a fact-finding mission, and this, okay. I thought it was gonna be Farm City for Apex, but that's the thing, right? In a round like this, Vince, you have your player with a Mac 10 just running into a bomb site, making sure this, you know, you're not walking to a stack. And even if it gets taken down, the information gleam there is so, so crucial. As Majisk tapping away, if I'm Vitality, I'm not looking to lose more than two players at the max. I've already lost too many, if you ask me. Yeah, more than this, and you're looking at rifles, more rifles being expended. Uh, Dupree continues to peak, takes the head of Searson, and the round is done. Krimbo has a Mac 10, but. 
Won't be too keen to save that, all things considered. The suit will put him down. And yeah, it was it was an interesting moment with Apex looking to farm less farm and more Shepherd though, as he kept all those CTs over on the A side and allowed B site to be open. So Vitality 3-0 on the lead, but Blair, we have ourselves a buy coming up on the side of Big. The AWP in the hands of Sirison. And M4s in each and every one of his teammates. Utility, a bound, three kits as well. So this is very, very full-fledged buy. And for Vitality, they did suffer a few casualties, but that's okay. They still have a little bit of money in the bank as we do try to go for a little bit of a, a mid-battle here. Tapson dealing a lot of damage on the Zaiwu. It's now been whittled down to 4 HP through the smoke. They still have Dupree top of mid, and Tapson finds Apex. He will be tagged down to 46 HP, but after this initial skirmish, Big will be coming out on top here. They've taken down Apex. Zaiwu internally hemorrhaging at the moment, and Vitality... They need to decide what they want to do here. They do have Dupree towards top mid. Masuda pushed up inside of the kitchen in B apartments. But still a minute on the clock. They have a lot of time remaining to work with. Dupree now on a one-man mission to try and find something. To try and maybe find an opening. Potentially try and, you know, divert the attention of the CTs. But now the B play coming in. And the two CTs towards short. This could catch them off guard, Vince. It's all about the timing. I've boosted up as well, but it seems like they're more preoccupied with middle. And in doing so, they get caught out. Majisk and Masuta both come out with kills. And although Masuta and Zaiwu are both underneath 5 HP, Zaiwu may not be required because Dupree is putting down the pain in middle. And that opens up the B site again. How brutal this round is on the side of Big. They're in a position where they may think they've done a lot of damage, but you're in a 2v3 with an AWP on a retake. No kits, but they have dealt the fatal blow to Dupree. But they're pulling out. They Vitality are going to win this round. They have no idea how low Masuda and Zaiwu are. They probably know how low Masuda was because they did deal quite a bit of damage inside of B apartment. So Zaiwu, that was unconfirmed damage through the smoke from Tapson early in the round. I did worry there, Vince. I was like, yeah, like they're going for the short play, short boost, but the timing could catch him off. Got the timing. It was the worst timing possible for Big while trying to boost up. Able to only find one. Huge kills. Good trading for Vitality. And Dupree towards mid, he didn't really have to do anything. He just waited there. And then he caught one of the CDs walking out through the smoke. His job was either to create a distraction or to cut off the rotation. And all he had to do was find a one kill. And even though it was a two versus two, because Big had no idea how low the final two players were, they have to go for the save. 4-0 oh for Vitality. Now for Big, they'll be able to eke out still a very solid buy. They have the op still in the hands of Sirison from the previous round. A lot of M4 A1s and a faster pace being set here by Masuda towards the B bomb site. Oh, this is fast. Oh, they're picking up the pace. This is rapid. They're already closing the gap, but Searson and Faven will be passing with flying colors. Majisk is the only player to answer back on the tees. And Dupree picks up the pace. Molly down, but Tapson stands his ground. And Zaiwu, all that remains, will get the free frag onto Tapson, although nearly made a meal of that. A bit off more than he could chew. And with a low crimbo. This is not out of the realms of possibility. The magician, Zai Wu, still almost full HP. Plenty of time. Has control over the bomb and a Molotov to try and cordon off one of these areas and force the CTs into awkward angles. That Molly allows him to just clear all of these angles now on the site so he can feel comfortable. Searson passes by on the marketplace, doesn't see Zai Wu relocating in towards the market himself. And if he takes down Crimbo, this could get so messy so quick. There is the frag. Still 81 to his name as he peeks back out. But there is Searson. And Big finally claimed their first round. You could see how good Zyru is in the way he played that one versus four. If he sneaks his way towards bench. He finds the kill. Gets a second one inside a market. But the way he was able to use his Molotov, clear out every single angle while ensuring he doesn't get spotted. While ensuring he won't get caught with his back turned to one of the CTs showing why he's one of the best players we have ever had in this game. But eventually, Searson, his aim is true. Vince, he lands the shot. If he gets taken down there, suddenly uh, it's a 1v1. And as I in a 1v1, usually you're going to be favoring him as we'd have attack time at getting called here pretty early on by Vitality after having lost their first round. Although, again, Vince, they inflict so much damage, right? Three rifles getting taken away from the big side. So despite winning this one round, they still are in a very 
pecklish situation economy wise we have Sirison with about 2k he's the one who survived a couple of rounds back to back so he's got that extra bonus money every one of them are kind of broke of course for now they have a full-fledged buy coming in the one kit for Crimbo I would like Sirison to buy an extra kit he's got the cash just the one solitary kit makes me a little uncomfortable for the side of Vitality it is a little a little rough Apex on the P250 Dupree comes charging out, and he will be found. They still have the AWP, though, for the very first time in the hands of Zaiwu. Sirson, though, will have him dead to rights if he continues to peek. They're both waiting the other side of the smoke. Zaiwu, his brain is so big with this AWP. He knows when to back away, when to re-peek, and Sirson never stood a chance. The early kill into Dupree has now been equalized. Balance back out the scales, no longer tipping in Big's favor. In fact, you could argue it's in Vitalities, as with the 4v4, it spread the big team out that little bit more. And now with a minute left on the clock, Vitality are taking systematic control over the B-apps. Crimbo goes down to the hands of Magisk, and now Favin has to have a huge round. Try and stall. Tapson is rotating in quickly alongside Tizian, but they stomp Favin from above. And Tapson's made moves through on the marketplace. Could very well deny the bomb plant. There it comes in, but now his position is known. Three players to find and frag. Second goes his way. A low Magisk has been removed, and the bomb is now down on the site. This round is in the palm of Tapson's hands, and he snatches the life out of Vitality. What a beautiful clutch from the IGL. That's a one versus four almost coming in from Tapson. His repositioning there was sublime, Vince. And that is off from Magist just opens up that B bomb side. Firstly, just a great pre-fire around the corner, catching the player inside of apartments. Then he Goomba stomps Faven <laughs> towards Van. But Tapson, you can see how quick his repositioning was. Zywu still wasn't looking, wasn't expecting him to have walked inside off uh, towards the side of bench. These are the openings from Magisk, but this is played to perfection by Tapson. You can see Zai was still not expecting where he is, and then he reads Apex's flank coming in from Market to perfection. Huge, huge round from the captain, and he delivers. Vitality now down to just the pistols. You can see a deagle, a couple of deegs in the hands of Magisk and Masuda. One smoke to work with. And for Big, this is a round they want to win. And not just win, but win convincingly, Vince. Don't hemorrhage any players. Favin with the, with the MP7, okay. That's a rarity nowadays. They don't see it too often. Still a damn solid weapon. Obviously costs more than the MP9, the counterpart you'd likely see for the most part. UMPs, of course, are a thing of the distant past. One stage, they're everywhere, Blair, but that's that's just Counter-Strike for you. The meta changes, the weapons change. The A4 was all the craze for one stage, and now the A1S is back at the forefront. But yeah, I completely agree. This has to be a clear-cut round on big. Like, you've just pulled off a 1v4. That's going to crush the soul, crush the economy of vitality. But what do you do with it? Shot misses from Searson. We'll get it on the second time of asking. There are still deagles in play, though. So big need to be careful. That's the bomb. The bomb spills out. The aforementioned MP7 now comes to the forefront with a kill. Zaiwu is going to put down one casualty. But that, all things considered, that's okay. That's okay. They also retrieved the M4A1, yes. so it's only the MP7 getting lost. And that's all right. Able to stave off the, the Deagles. And Vitality. Here comes the buy. Apex off to a bit of a quiet start here. We know how explosive it can be, but it's okay. You know, 4-3 T side here. Your map pick. Vitality should still be feeling pretty comfortable. Apex opting to go with a little just so can afford that extra flashbang, that extra little bit of utility. Four Molotovs, a ton of smokes, and we really haven't seen too much of ac action on this A bomb site yet, Vince, apart from the pistol round. Vitality now. You can see the group up here. A bit of a waterfall from Palace. They have Majisk and Dupree, and for big. Opted not to battle towards the A bomb side. And look at the position of Sirison as well inside of market. He can quickly pivot back towards A the moment they see the smokes arrive. That's a good point. Big have the mobility to get around quickly. Now the wall of smoke's being put in. HE behind it. Minimal damage inflicted. Negligible to Misuda. Only five. Tizian now with his back to the wall has to be the lone bastion, the safeguard of the site, but the warden has been dethroned, and it's Dupree's hand that puts him down. And with that death and the smoke still up, 
Every chance to get this bomb planted now on the side of Vitality. Smoke's now clearing, but Masuda's is going to dust off the cobwebs. And only Crimbo's came back in with one of his own. Heavy damage inflicted to multiple Vitality players. But Searson and Crimbo are now slowly being asphyxiated out of this round. And Zaiwu is going to pick up the pace. Apply the pressure directly to the forehead with Searson. And Crimbo cannot get anything in this round. Runs back to his spawn and Dupree is there. Vitality masterfully dictating the pace of the round. Yeah, they completely obliterated the defense there. Great stuff coming out. And even the post plants, Vince, they didn't allow Big to really set up the retake. They just kept peppering away at them with their H47. Firstly, Tizian, like you pointed out, caught by his lonesome, gets taken down. And look at the proactive Apex getting on top of the stairs, making sure the CT coming up from Connector gets taken care of. And the final two CTs trapped inside of, uh, right towards CD spawn, basically, towards the ticket booth. Well, basically getting nothing done. The force spike comes out. Sirison will be found by Zai. We were cheeky little boost early on. And Sirison, well, there's not much he's going to be doing this round. And if you look at the buy for big, it's not that great, Vince. A couple of M4s. You have the Deagle in the hands of Tizian and Tapson with the FAMAS. They would be looking to retrieve that AWP, though. The question is, how did it pull this off? They still have to be wary. They don't notice no one towards the top of mid. And quietly, sneakily, they pulled it off. The AWP will now be handed over towards Tapson. We know he is pretty capable with the scoped rifles. We just saw it with a scout earlier on in this map itself. A delayed window smoke. As Vitality, they're going to be coming back, poking and prodding towards mid. The thunderous shots of the op in the hands of Zaiwu. Letting his presence be known. Big dub. They're going to be a little proactive here, Vince, but it might be a little too late because the B hit is coming in and it's going to come down to young Crimbo with his soul AQ, sorry, his soul M4A1 in his hands. Oh, this is so difficult. The Molly's also extended. I'm pretty sure they heard that. And we get peaked. Oh. He had no chance. That Molotov, the utility was perfectly placed. And as you said, everything was resting on his shoulders. However, because it's only him on the site, it does afford Big the luxury of trying to hold on to these saved weapons. So they'll have something to play with. My concern here, though, Blair, is the overall bigger picture of this game. If Tabson doesn't pull off that outrageous 1v4 and they win the subsequent round afterwards, you'd be looking at like a 7-1 scoreline right now. Oh, absolutely. Don't Think get me wrong. they're getting wrecked. Oh, absolutely. Vitality have had their number, and, and you can show and you can see why they've gone for this map pick, right? I might have had a, a couple. I, I didn't have a question mark. I'm like, okay, which map are Vitality going to be going with over here? I initially thought they might go with with Vertigo because of the recent successes on that map. Because Mirage, it's again, it's a 50-50 map for Vitality. We we saw them dominate Liquid on, and we saw them get smacked down by Outsiders as well. We're wondering, are they going to go on a map like Mirage where Big have shown they can be pretty dominant on? And they go on it, and they're flexing really hard right now. 6-3 on the T side, with the money broken for the CTs, where they're going to have to go for a force once more. This is just a sheer dominant performance, and even the timings in which they're hitting the bomb side. We saw Big going for the right play, right? You've lost Sirson early on. They retrieve the AWP. They try and push towards T-Ramp, trying to at least gather some information, right? And they, they would have found out, yeah, there's no one towards A. We can pivot back towards P. But by the time they find that information, they've already lost the B site. Krimbo, as you pointed out, getting absolutely ruined by the Molotov and Misuta. He didn't even give him a chance to rattle off a single bullet. Masuta, for me, has been a question mark for this team for a while. Sure, he had a few uh, times where he's shown what he can do, but he has been kind of flat for me recently, especially in this legend stage. He really hasn't delivered, but right now he's starting to wake up. And if you look at the scoreline, okay, fine, Apex has been struggling a bit, but he doesn't really have to do much. Everyone, every one of the individuals are chipping in. It's not only Majisk who's been incredible thus far. It's not only Zaiwu, one of the best players they have, not one of the best players in the world, but absolutely the best player in this team. But also Dupree and Musuta chipping in with the numbers. Things are looking good. The money is looking solid. And for big once more, it is going to be the force coming out. Famas, Famas's MP9s, and a fast play towards A. Saracen did see a pixel, but misses his shot. It's not the first one he's missed either. It's starting to look a little bit grim, but there's the MP9. Re-engage from Tizzy and double spray with the SMG. Uh, Magus coming to trace over the corpse of his teammates, but two massive entries back, equalizing the round. Whatever Tizian can do, Magus can do just as well, but he's down to 26. So much bloodshed in a short period of time. There's still over a minute left on the clock. Yeah. And Dupree 
staying atop mid, ensuring no one's going to be walking up, trying to get the flank on. And right now, Big's feeling a little paranoid. The amount of times Vitality have been going for this B hits. We even saw on the pistol round the, the slow, late B look coming out from Vitality. So Crimbo, I like this from Crimbo. He's not just holding onto the B bomb site. He's being proactive. He's pushing it towards B apartments, and it's getting a lot of information. That's going to allow both Sirison and Favon to concentrate towards the A bomb site. And I like this from Vitality. Two players are grouped up towards Palace. That was Majisk retrieving the, uh, the C4, moving up together with Zaiwu. And it's going to come down to Dupree here. He's going to try and sneak his way towards connector, and they're taking so very long. Searson's rotated himself. He's now going to be coming in towards mid. They've somehow managed to find the timing, Vince. This is huge for Vitality. Oh, it's so brutal on Big, though. They've lost their first player in this engagement. And as you said, with Searson making moves away, it may be the end of the round, but they're taking too long. They just dropped the bomb down, but Zaiwu does come back. That was looking a bit shaky for a few moments on the side of Vitality. But now Krimbo... They know he's the lone B defender for the most part. He has to try and wiggle his way into some kind of advantageous position, but it's hard to see how he can get this one done. Zaiwu on one side, Dupree on the other, and Krimbo in the middle of this sandwich. A position he doesn't want to be in. He doesn't even have a kit, and time is already low. This feels like he's just effectively waiting around and just seeing what happens. He's not really being proactive. This round is done. He can't defuse the bomb. Whatever happens, Vitality are going to take a 7-3 lead. And their economy is still not in good position. They're still not in good shape, but he's looking to try and save this orb. He will be taking down Dupree in the process. Not too shabby, all things considered. But it does still put Big at a huge dis discrepancy in terms of rounds. I, I, I am a little surprised why Sirison rotated back from Ticket Booth because we saw we saw Crimbo pushing in toward, towards the B apartments and he was getting so much information. So the play would have been, they're going, either going to be coming up towards mid or from A and Sirison really pushing control. That kill by Dupree at jungle was pivotal. If he doesn't find that kill, suddenly he gets taken down and things look a little uncomfortable for Vitality. Even if they get the bomb down, the retake was very much within the realms of possibility here for B. Oh, Zaiwu, he's just everywhere, Vince, and I love to see it. Searson, he goes towards A, Zaiwu there, you go towards B, Zaiwu there as well. And that's the op, the only one saved weapon. Good find by Tizian, though. Catches Majisk, and that's an AK-47 retrieve. The op as well has been picked up by Krimbo, and bear in mind, even though it is kind of like the, the light buy with pistols, they do have armor. So the AK-47 and the op can be wielded quite a efficiently and quite effectively by both Tizian and Krimbo. As Vitality, once more, trying to go for this A play. The two men walk up towards Palace, no one towards Ramp. And that could be Tizian being a thorn. If he can stay alive towards a Ramp position, this walk up from Palace, it's not going to be easy at all. So it's going to come down to Apex to do something. Apex waiting at the edge of the smoke. Is he going to find the timing? No, he doesn't, but he's been spotted. But immediately, he peels back. But then that's the time for the Suda to strike. Well, the flash from Tabson is so good. Only oh. blinding Masuda, but Apex is there to retort, to retaliate, and to regain the lead in terms of manpower. Vitality still have the Thorn of Crimbo to dethrone, but he can't really get too much done in this position. He's being watched down from Apex as well. Still, though, takes the head of Apex. Plant down in the smoke, but Dupree's position here is so solid. He's out on the catwalk side, and I believe the bomb is planted for him. So although they're looking to try and boost over on these CT boxes, which so far it's not working out for them. Oh no. I don't think it matters a great deal either way though, Blair. Even if they did manage to get a pick on Zaiwu, Dupree's position is so good. He mm -hmm. has a molly. They both have molotovs. This round's done again. Big are just looking to save. And this has been a reoccurring thing. Yeah, no kits as well, right? So what Favin would be looking to do is maybe pick up a rifle from one of the fallen Vitality members perhaps, but yeah. Looked a little worrying for a second there. Maybe if the boost worked out, maybe they could have potentially found Zaiwu, the AK-47. It's so close by, so tantalizingly close. Favid is gonna run for it, but... Nice Molotov, that, you know. Yeah. He threw the molly purposely to make Just sure they the rifle. Lovely stuff from Zaiwu and great spot there, Vitz. Uh, eight and three. This has been domination for Vitality. Even though they did lose a few players there, it's okay. It's all right. Eight and three, you still have quite a bit of money in the back. Zaiwu's was over 11k, seemingly unkillable right now. Here's the man, 11 to four. 11 and four, as you can see, a number of players dropping underpass, and I think that's been spotted by, by Dupree. 
Flashbang will pop, they're gonna avoid it. The two CDs lying in wake. Sirson finds it first. And look at the number of CTs here as Masuda. Only good for one. And this was a bit of an unorthodox play from Big. Three players towards underpass, but it will work out at least for the time being. The crazy part about that play is it works out, but you imagine if Vitality stacked top mid, they'd have got wrecked in the side of the head. They'd have had no chance. It's, called, it's kind of desperate times call for desperate measures. It has worked out, as you say, in an orthodox play, but Vitality are still in this round. Faven down to 48, a 4v3, but so much in terms of grenades on the belt of Vitality. And Dupree is sneaking his way into window already, bypassing a lot of these positions, snaking himself into jungle. And considering that Big have nobody on Shadow, no one Sandwich, no one Firebox, their two defenders are back on CT boxes. The positions for Vitality are very strong right now. A lot of utility remaining for both the sides here in 45 seconds. It's all about the timing and Zyru reading it to perfection. Tizian will fall, but it's two players now and Tapson, what can he do from here? Dupree's not gonna check this and Tapson lets him walk by. And there's the veteran in full swing. He wants to deny the bomb plant. This is beautiful from Tapson, but it's just the one kill. He nearly had more. Dupree now up on the CT boxes. Tapson's given them a chance, a window of opportunity. Smoke in the eyes of the CTs, difficult oh. site to retake. And Faven just takes so much damage. Drop down to zero, leaving Crimbo on another retake mission. He's had so little to do this game. He's either been wrecked on five players, pushing him on B, or retaking A every round. What we do know, though, is Vitality. They're 9-3 in the lead on their T side. Looking fan. Fantastic, the French Danish squad. Tapson, he needed more than one kill from that position, Vince. He played at a perfection, but. I kind of thought he'd get the C4 planter, spin around, and catch a player in CT and just tuck inside a ticket boot. That could have potentially been the ideal call, but great reaction once more from a Jisk. So many impact frags being found by the Dane. This is a switch up, this is a switch from Vitality. A fast take towards short. They're walking up, not making too much noise. Player drops down, Apex will be found. <laughs> Look at Dupree just running in, leaving Tapson. Is Masuda at least able to trade? Tapson will eventually fall. And Favon and five points of health. Tizian, I think he spotted Majisk. He's seen the dome of his head, and Sirson will decapitate him. Four versus two. Around big desperately need. But as long as this man is alive, Zai Wu, you can never count on Vitality. Slowly a double creep up here, no eyes on them. They're playing this one a little passively, all oh, big. You can already see Tizian pushing towards the uh, ramp position. He's holding very aggressively. So that's one angle they don't have to worry about. And it's going to come down to the B hit. There is a player tucked inside. It is Faven. That's a bit of rough spray from Masuta though, but Zai Wu, he strikes once. Masuta knows at least one player's on the site. They're both backing out. However, the one contingent they're not sure about is Searson's, and he is in ramp with the AWP on the cross. If Vitality try and push to A, he should be good for at least one kill, but they may not be afforded that luxury because a double stack on Catwalk could shut them down through middle first. Vitality need to make a decision and push through with it. Zaiwu is sneaking around the side, but this is the problem. This, this does nothing towards dethroning Searson's spot. Even if Sai Wu gets around here onto the boxes, Searson just has to pick off the bomb, and this round is done. 15 seconds, nails the bomb carrier. Good night, Vitality. This round is over. It's so hard to see how Sai Wu can win this. He has Molly in. He's being stalled away, surely. Zaiwu can't pull this round out of his hat. Surely the Magician is not going to make Big disappear one more time. He's moving into Searson, and Searson puts him down. The fact that Zaiwu even got a plant there is outrageous. Yeah, that is just a ridiculous movement from Zaiwu. And for a moment there, Vince, I, I was starting to fear for Big again. Even though it was a one versus three, Zaiwu, who knew was Sirson one, if, if he could isolate the fights there, catch Sirson, then it's very much very winnable for Zaiwu. It is so unfortunate that it was Masuta with the C4. Because if it was Zaiwu, he could have snuck in from CD spawn. Sirson would have no idea. He could have planted the bomb from CD spawn. Zaiwu could have tucked in inside of CD spawn as well. And then you have Masuta just staying left towards the connector area, cutting off the rotation. And that would have left the CTs in a very uncomfortable spot. Finally, the streak will come to an end. Five in a row for Vitality. But big, four rounds here out of 13. Uh, they're not going to be... Quite happy with that yet. 
Maybe six rounds. Maybe that is something they could work with. Tag timeout as God B will be speaking with his squad. Double upset, a double upset of coming out here from Big. Something we haven't seen much at all yet thus far. Searson and Crimbo. Taps and, and the rest of his crew with the uh, with the M4s, of course, and AK as well, picked up a Tizian from the previous round. Of vitality. They're in a pretty comfortable spot, Vince. Even if they lose this, if they're able to save a couple of guns, they're going to eke out a buy. And even, yeah, listen, even if they lose all the weapons here, they will have enough money for at least three AK-47s, maybe a couple of Galils. Fast play coming out here towards ramp as Zaiwu's going to be boosted up. Looking to catch someone. Tries to time the shot, though, but no one's going to cross early. Taps in. A little bit of delayed cross, maybe allowing him to stay alive. And a missed shot from Searson. That one should have been a sitter. There was no flash across on over, and they are playing with fire. Dupree. Tucked into the corner, Susan knows exactly where he is. I think he can even spot the yeah. tip of the barrel as well. And Dupree's aware of this. Dupree knows that Susan knows where he is. Yeah, he took a shot at him from this very position. So yes, Dupree knows 100%. The thing is, though, what they do about this, because they're effectively locking away the AWPA in this position. That's why they brought in the Molotov. There's no way he could have escaped that. I don't think Dupree had a smoke to extinguish it. It's really cool, the little changes that you see from both teams. Very good react. You sit up in multiple areas. Like, the guy is just all over the map, depending on spawn. But, speaking of which, Tizian, he's pushed through on the ramp side. That, that's very, very important here for Big. Most of the times when they try to go for the map control, it's after they've lost a player, right? We saw them push down ramp when they lose a player, when they're a 4v5, disadvantageous position. This time around, the fact that it's pushing so deep is going to allow three CTs now to hold the line on the B bombs at Apex. In the meantime, trying his desperate best to sell something towards Connector with a look at the position from Favon, though. Flashback is going to find Dupree. Flash for short, not expecting anyone there. The open hand of Sirison is going to pluck Masuda, and this round might go the way of it. Ooh, the miss on Magus, though, gives him a way forward. But there's Crimbo up on the boxes. Apex watching the back, his third kill of the half. Zaiwu still alive. And while Zaiwu lives, there is always doubt in the hearts of Big. 20 seconds, though, in order to pull off this masterful clutch. And he's going to get picked off in the back. That flash from Apex doing him no <laughs> favors at all. And it's going to be Vitality 10-5 in the lead. They had to go for a desperation play. Was a bit funny, though. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, the, the flash is for the CT playing towards short. But it's, it's kind of reminds me of when we played matchmaking with Hugo. It's like, I'm flashing. I'm like, no, don't flash. <laughs> just blinded. I mean, he's trying to be helpful, but <laughs> just unnecessary. But nonetheless, yeah, good round coming out from Big there again. Uh, we didn't really see too much of extremity control being exerted by Big early on the CD side, right? I think that was the one round where we saw them, uh, Tizian pushing down ramp early in the round and able to gather information that it is going to be a B hit. And with uh, the Vitality running out of time, they had to make a little bit of haste. And the three-man set up there, perfectly shutting it down. Is it a little too, little too late, though, Vince? That, that's a question. Five rounds on the CD side is... It's it's not a fun score line. Although you can never count on big, as we have a smoke and a flash being pushed by Crimbo. It's a fast play coming in towards A. Fast play. Apex has seen it as well. I don't know if that grenade's going to do too much. No, it was a bit too deep. Need to be more shallow. Apex though now stepping back up with the P2000. Two players in the window already, and Apex is staying alive, and that's very important. It doesn't allow them to bypass into the CT side here. Taiwu a little bit labored with his USP. That allows a bit of window control, and now the Julies go to work. So many bullets in the magazines, allowing a little bit of a reprieve on the side. It's a post plant. There's a flank round the back, additionally from Tizian. And he's praying that Crimbo can just stay alive. Now the CTs start to embark on their retake journey. No there kits. is no kit, no grenades. Tapping onto the bomb. Crimbo takes the head of Apex, but now his position is known. It's compromised, and the full defuser is coming in. Oh. And there's Major Squids, the Julies. Picking up a third and securing himself a 15th kill and an 11th round for his team. Beretta's Akimbo is Majisk. Beautifully played. And Apex as well, Vince. Like, even though initially he doesn't get any kill with the P2K, he prevents the plant from taking yeah. place for a few seconds, buying a little bit more time on his retake, which was crucial because they didn't have any kit, as you pointed out. And Majisk, the bodyguard, first bullet, that's all he needs. What a round for Vitality. It didn't look like Bigger done enough. 
But they got some, they got the opening pick, they got the bomb down, they got some pretty good. The flank is for from CD spawn, that should have sealed the deal. But Vitality, they hold on 11 to 5. Big round from everyone involved, especially from Majisk and Apex. And for Big, despite getting the bomb down, the call has been made that they're going to be going for just the upgraded pistols. We see a few deagles. Faven actually digging in a little deep and going for the Kevlar buy as well. So four deags, Kevlar on Faven and no utility whatsoever. For Vitality, it's just the, the usual standard buy. You have a couple of SMGs and in, the, in the hands of Dupree and Zaiwu, the A1s for the rest of them. Zaiwu may be hoping to farm a little bit of cash so he can bring out the AWP at the earliest opportunity. And for Big, they need to be presented a, a pick here, a, a duel here for them to find something. They don't really have any utility, zero utility to work with. Precisely, those deagles need to find a target. And don't Vitality know it. The way they're playing right now is so passive, so deep in their angles. Not trying to take mid control, not putting themselves in harm's way. Excellent call. Now Big, with 30 seconds, will start to feel the pressure of time. Because obviously they want to die before time here. The whole purpose of this round is to build up that economy. So they have to rush in. From range, the MP9 sprays down. That's the bomb that goes with it. And Zaiwu putting some money in for the AWP fund with two frags. And as anticipated, this round falls heavily in Vitality's favor. And with not losing a single player here, Blair, they can hold on. They can use this now as a bonus round. Absolutely. Almost a team ace there. For big. Big guns come out. AK-47 Searson going with the the AWP, meaning it just has Kevlar and absolutely not a singular piece of utility. And because of the Deagle purchase in the previous rounds, Vince, and we, you can see Fab and he went for the armor Deagle as well. He only has one flash. So a bit of utility lacking. Early two smokes already getting used for the short smoke as well as for jungle. So they're really not having much options to work with here. And look at the way they're approaching this round off big. It's a standard default. We have Tizian looking towards apartments. We have Krimbo making his way up from Connector. And of course, Favin making sure there's no aggression from the CTs, either from Ramp or Palace. He's just holding on to that position while we have Tapson and Susan with the AWP looking to maybe find something at mid. For Vitality, it's a very A-centric defense. We have the SMGs over there, both the SMGs, and it's gonna be a perfectly timed peak from Krimbo. Apex will fall, that's one of the rifles, and it's already made his way into a murder hole. That's a that's so fast coming in from Krimbo. They're very brave, aggressive, love that. Not resting on their laurels, but trying to push forward and take control of this round, take control of this half. That's what they have to do. Yes, it might be a bonus. He's still going to dot all the eyes across all the T's, and Krimbo's doing just that as he puts a bullet in the head of Masuta. With two MP9s, though, up close in these kind of ranges, things could get tentative, and Vitality make the read. They make the call. They're rotating. In comes the Zaiwu push, though. He had a good read of the situation, and Faven goes in for more. A freebie frag from Dupree. Can trade up now to the AK-47, but he'll have to deal with Searson who is on the prowl with his AWP at range. This is not a range you want to try and take. If you are Dupree, that does mean that Big will pick up a round on their T side and see us and make sure there'll be no save weapons in the process. It was a bonus round, but still a huge round from Young Krimbo. Catching Apex and Connector, like just, he wasn't expecting that dry peak there. Gets taken down, the pace towards jungle, and still, there was a danger big we're gonna be walking in inside of the stack. When he catches a rotation out from Market, which it, I, I feel that was a bit of a blunder from Vitality, right? You should be aware that your jungle's completely open, there could be a player posted there. And once he gets taken down, they immediately pivot back towards B bomb side because they know at the max, it's going to be one player towards B. And then Zaiwu, maybe not expecting a player to be up close. They're just running on in with the MP9, hoping to catch him off guard towards T-spawn. A well-played round overall from Big. Krimbo being the uh, the main man behind it. But they've gone. They opted to go for the uh, for the full eco events. I respect that. You know, it's 12 and 6. There's no need to panic buy. There's no need to try and break the economy. You know you're in a very comfortable spot right now. Save your money. Get the AWP out for Zaiwu. Throw it in his direction. Have the M4s out. And for Big, it's about trying to 
ensure they get round number seven without suffering too many casualties. Zaiwoon Masuta both with the Deegs. See a 5-7 and a couple of P250s in the mix as well. This position is very deadly, but especially with a 5-7 and the Deagle crossfire. If there's no flashbang, if they just walk on in, this could be a free kill for the CTs. Absolutely, there is a flashbang, but still Dupree. He recognized that possibility, turned his back on it. No. And another frag from Masuda. Big no. getting capitulated, destroyed by Vitality with a 5-7 and Deagle now trading up. There's another one for Zaiwu. If he no. wants it, and indeed he will. It's not just the round looking like it'll go in the way of their favor, <laughs> but they lose oh. one player in the process. Big have just been completely destroyed. When I said they should lose uh, just one player at max, I, I was talking about right now. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh no. no, Vince. The, that's the round. That's the round you go back when you look at it and you're like, all right, that's where Vitality pretty much won. Yeah, that felt like the soul leaving the body of Big uh, for Mirage. A kill with a 5-7, upgraded to the AK, kill with the AK, and then the Deagles, and in the end, the USP from Mitchis just goes to work, just goes to town. Oh, my lord. That is, uh, that is not ideal for Big. But for Vitality, they will take it. Look at the amount of upgrades they have as well. But Majes caught off guard, not expecting Tapson to catch him at that angle. And Tapson just slowly creep walking in. That's going to force Apex to be a little bit more proactive. And proactive indeed he will be. And he's going to find another one on the escape. They know where the fourth player is as well. And that is Searson. And he will immediately find a bullet between his eyes. They knew where Tapson was. He got the kill towards Cat. Bomb dropped out in the open. Round number 14 coming up for Vitality. Well, Tapson's picked up a 1v4 already in this game, but this is a whole different <laughs> ask of him. And the flash drive-by headshot will secure that 14th round. 14-6, to six, that was a full purchase on the side of Big. I don't think their money is looking in great shape right now, Blair. This might be either some kind of a force bargain bucket scraping the bottom of the barrel by. Could even be an eco. Oh, there's something rush long. I assume that means B apps, maybe. That's the only long I see here, and that could be it. And you're right; it's a hard call to make, Vince. But they're basically going to try and battle out for OT. They have the pistols, maybe hoping to replicate what Vitality did to them. Apex needs to be careful as Tizian finds him. Flash is good. Zaiwu though can actually pull back, and of course he repeats. Of course he keeps going in. Deagle whipped out, and Major's dead to help him out. It was looking grim for a few moments on Vitality, but they have stabilized. It's at the cost of a couple of lives, and Searson is still in with a chance, but Masuda has his angle covered, and there will be no escape. There will be no seventh round just yet. However, another buy will be coming up, but this is their last chance, Blair. Vitality on the cusp, on the precipice of taking the first map and nearly knocking Big out of the Major. Ooh wee what a dominant performance, right? And um, I love that from Zywu. Just he's like, all right, fine. I have to stand and deliver, and stand and deliver he does. Nine map points for Vitality on their map pick at final, potentially final tactical timeout getting called by Big. What did it do? Nine on the trot. It's been done in the past. But just the the dominant way in which Vitality are winning the rounds, it, it gives me. It leaves me very little hope. Copenhagen Flames, 15 and nine against FaZe in the 2-1 matchup. Uh, yeah. Bruh. On, on FaZe's map pick. <laughs> this major is, uh, is a little topsy-turvy, Vince, but right now what's not topsy-turvy is Vitality with a gargantuan lead on their map pick. And here we go, big, holy smokes. Oh, this is, a, this is a kind of the newer smoke here. We have a smoke towards Cat, we have a smoke in the middle of ramp. They're gonna try and play around it, but instead, they don't leave anyone there. And Vitality might fall for it. They think there's someone looking to battle at mid, but look at the poking coming in from Apex, and Apex is aware that there is no one towards mid. Now they can fall back towards the A bomb set or B, but there's only one player at A right now. It is Majisk, all the way to its ticket booth. Apex on the rotation, now gets shut down in the back though from Searson. The bomb isn't here, it's still traversing round on the T side. Another kill though goes the way of Big. Maybe holding on a little bit longer in this game. 
Fast rotation on Zywu through middle, but he's going to get caught by two players. I think he's probably hurt this, though. Indeed, he has. Does he expect a second? He does. That in-game IQ spiking again doesn't give his position away but the bomb is going to be getting planted on the other side and there is tizian who just played it patiently and passively and so big will be yielding a seventh round bare minimum i don't expect vitality to go in for this one especially considering that zaiwu is on low money the rest of them have no issues buying but just bolster up that buy don't get too desperate to finish this map off Second AWP is down on the ground if they want it. Doubt they'll be picking up two AWPs, though, on the T side. This is more about Masuta. But Tizian, he knows the AWP is down, and he understands that it's important for him to stay in this position. If Masuta pushes out, there's two players here that are going to deal with him. He does take the kill, and he yoinks the AWP and pieces out of there. Well played. Well played indeed, good sir. That was a very well constructed round from Big. We saw the uh, the double smokes admit that it's usually a tell that there are going to be a couple of T's top of mid looking to take the fight, playing around the smoke. And but Vitality were a step ahead of that. I Apex actually pushes pushes up mid. He realizes no one there. Then we see the execute taking place towards B. It's a double fake coming in from Vitality. They catch him rotating out, and then Sirson with two clean openings on the A bomb side. Round is done. Sirson plucks Apex. Two rounds back to back now where he's found Apex's number and Zai was looking to do a little bit of solo combat opping, but he will be flushed back by the utility. <laughs> For some reason I've just got like that hold me back meme every time I see Zaiwu pushing up me like hold me back guys they just got flashes, <laughs> mollies, like everything's there to deal with him. Meanwhile this round isn't over just yet though even though two casualties down on Vitality, Dupree holds on ladder, but b site has been lost. They need to save does feel like it's going to be a save. I mean, there's a lot of money on the likes of Dupree, but it's more along the side of Zaiwu. Apex are starting to struggle a little bit financially. And again, it's the bigger picture. Doesn't matter if Vitality win this 16-14, 16-9. All they care about is winning this map. So don't rush in. Don't give anything away for free. Absolutely. Uh, and I think you hit the nail on the head there, right? Sure, you have a lot of money for Dupree. Uh, you know, Misuda will have the bonus money as well. But it's more like, sure, you go for this retake, but you might lose all your players. Then you have a buy. You lose that, you're going to have to eco instead. Just let this round slide by. You're going to have yep. two back-to-back -back buys coming in after that. So the right call from Vitality, the bigger picture. That, that's something which some of the newer teams, uh, more newer up-and-coming teams, they tend to kind of lose track of, right? I've even seen some teams who well, are quite tenured make some questionable buy decisions. And suddenly, you look at a scoreline and their team, your your opponents are trailing by just two or three rounds, your money's in a rough space, and you're wondering how the, it all went wrong. But when you look at Vitality, you look at the veterans on this team. You know, just a, one of the best players we've ever had in the, in the world, a couple of major winners right there, one of the greatest coaches standing behind them as well. There's more than enough veterancy and awareness. What a find here, though. Oh. Searson coming alive, even if this map goes the way of Vitality, Sirson coming alive is going to be uh, a, a, an X factor, a very important factor for the side of Big if they want to bring the series back and maybe even take us to map number three. Exactly. Him finding form going into Vertigo, that's a tantalizing prospect. Tactical timeout has came and gone. Apex has an M4 on the ground, so he'll be picking that one up. He's also started to come back into this a little bit. He had a very slow start in the first half. 10 and 17. At one stage, I think he was 2 and 10, 2 and 15 ish. CSM misses that shot, but doesn't get punished. Fully at least. Tagged down to 42. And now Crimbo taking a bit of control over middle with flashes and mollies alongside him. Some aggression. Flashbang over. Apex wants to get in the mix. We know from previous lineups and iterations, he has no problem entry fragging if the need is there. But he could also overextend. Gets his man of Searson. They line up for Dupree, but he can't get either of them. And Thompson and Faven will be taking the B site. It's another round that Big could be stealing away as they prolong this game just that little bit longer. Crimbo tucking in. It was a chair position. Just as the smoke dissipates. It's one round at a time, Vince. One round at a time. Once more, the save coming in, but because Dupree had so much money, he'll have no trouble buying for himself, and I'm sure he can also donate a weapon towards Zywu. In fact, I expect uh, Dupree to buy an AWP and give it to Zywu, and uh, maybe Magis can 
drop a weapon for Dupree. So buy is still not going to be an issue here, but big, they're able to find some of finding a couple of rounds here. Apex is one in 10 in opening duels right now, which is kind of insane. So I'm just looking at the, the opening duel stats here. So it's been seven opening duels won by Vitality out, and uh, for the side of big, they've won 17 opening duels. Seven for Vitality, 17 for big, and the score line is 15 and nine. Jeez. The trading has been insane. And that's the thing with Apex, right? Even though he might not necessarily net you the opening duel, if you're able to trade off of him, if you're able to ensure that his death doesn't go in vain, that's all he has to do. Here we go, then once more, the smoke's coming in for the cross and the ramp smoke. And Apex is calming furiously to his teammates. Flash the pop as well, and that's gonna allow a player to sneak on in towards mid. That is Tapson. Free, having that secondary open play, something we haven't seen from Vitality just yet. Not catching him off guard just yet. It's the primary AWP of Zai Wu that strikes first. A Magisk on the balcony. Can hear grenades being pulled. Can hear players pushing his location, but still thwarts Tizian's play. And Zai Wu can make moves in for connector. Flashed out of position, leaving Magisk all alone, but he can survive quite a while longer. Molly down. They expend two Molotovs, though, just to deal with Magisk. And that's allowing Apex? a fast rotation round. But Apex realizes. Hold on a second, they haven't pulled the plug. They haven't decided to go into a site just yet. I can't give my life away. He is turning his back to middle though, but he's getting back into connector. What a strange decision from Apex. I'm not sure what Apex is up to. He just ran in and he just did a U-turn right before a bullet struck him between the eyes. But that's information gathered by Crimbo and they might just be walking into this crossfire events. Dupree, he doesn't miss these. Oh, it's so nice. The attention's turned to windows. So Apex can get the second. A beautiful setup. And that could very well be the map going the way of Vitality. Searson in a one versus three. Has 20 seconds to his name. Has got to push onto this B side. It's his only way forward. And there's players littered around this position right now. 10 seconds on the cross, whether it's Dupree, whether it's the player in apps, it doesn't make a difference because the end result is the same. And that's Vitality taking their choice of map and pretty convincingly so, all things considered. Yeah, that was off, all predicated off that T side. Just a brilliant start from Vitality. They they called well, they were able to toy with the rotations, having a little bit of fun outside of server as well. And yes, you deserve those smiles. That was so well played by every single player on the side of Vitality. And I, I want to actually bring up a stat which we alluded to at the beginning of this game. We spoke about how the 